In this video, I want to show how we can get started with Factory Talk Optics, the new HMI platform from Rockwell Automation. How we'll tie optics to a Logix controller. In this case, I'm going to be using Logix Echo, uh, the emulator for the 5580 controllers. And then I show the relationship of the push button object to how it works in Logix. It's a little bit different from VUSC and VUME, so we'll kind of highlight those two, um, the, well, the differences and how we would set that up. So to get started with optics, once we open up our optics studio, we have kind of two options now for a new project, either default or an optics panel. So default will basically be uh, like a clean slate project and uh, one that uh, would probably run on a, on a Windows platform uh, whereas if we chose optics panel, then that would be kind of specially suited to run on the the, the new optics panels, which are basically embedded um, panel mount, integrated display, uh, optics, runtime panels ready to go. So we hit default. We give it a uh, we can give it a new name. In this case, we'll just call it uh, optics. Logics test, give it your default location where to store it. And then as we come down here into our set main window size, we can set some preset um, resolutions, uh, 1280 by 800, 1280 by 1024, etc. I'm going to do 1280 by 800, I guess. Probably good enough. And I'll hit create. So now we're inside of the project. We're inside of um, the Optics Studio. We can now develop our application. So kind of two things we'll show here. One, we need to set our comm driver to tie it to our Logix controller. And then two, we'll go to just create a simple screen and put some push button objects on there and, and watch it uh, interface. Just to show you in the background, um, I do have a Logix controller kind of already pre-built with a simple, um, two simple rungs. Uh, we'll have like one rung, kind of a start one to start a line one, and then a start two to start a line two, simple latch circuit. And uh, this is running in our uh, Logix Echo emulator as well. Just to show you that this is running inside of a Logix emulator at 127.0.0.1. So let's first do our com driver. So we could do it one of two ways. We could either come here to the menu tree, the to navigation. We can right click on com drivers, say new, choose Rockwell Ethernet IP driver, or there's some pre, kind of there's some wizards uh, that we can choose to go with, and we could say configure communications to devices. So if we choose the wizard. It does make life a little bit simpler. We can say new station. We'll choose that it is a RA for Rockwell Automation Ethernet IP station. Hit next. And then the route would basically be our IP address. Again, that's the IP address of my Logix Echo emulator. Now I can give it a new name here. Um, so I can call it uh, Echo CPU or something that, that makes more sense to me. Um, after I do that, I have the choice of browsing for my tags, either offline or online. If I did offline, then I can come to my uh, desktop and find my ACD file, and, uh, and it'll open it up and find the tags. Or if I choose online, it will actually import the tags right outside of the controller. So once again, since I'm using the emulator, it sees the live controller and sees all the tags. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose them all and hit next. So now you can see that we have our old triangle. We explode that out. So here's our RA ethernet IP driver one and our Logix, uh, our Echo CPU device. And then here are our controller tags. 
that we just imported. So we have our tag set up and we have our communication path set up. So we're now ready to um, build some, build a screen and, and link some objects to it. So if we come back up here to UI for user interface, we have our main window. So if I double click on main window, it'll open up uh, the canvas that I can now edit in. Being that I chose the pre-default resolution of 1280 by 800, then it's showing right here, but I can of course change this um, if I want to. Now, it should be said that this is kind of the main window. Uh, when you do the optics um, labs and, and demos, it, basically what happens is, is we'll kind of create this main window and then we'll create pages and, and usually those act as containers that would kind of go inside of this main window kind of, you know, so we can create separate pages as containers and just kind of open up each page as a, you know, in the container. In this case, for this demonstration, I'm just going to stick with the main window, not create any of those pages or containers. Um, just to kind of show real quick how the push buttons work. So going back to my program, I've got a simple latch circuit again with a start and a stop. So I'm going to create a push button uh, that works to start this and to stop it. And I'm going to create uh, another set of push buttons uh, to start and stop the, uh, the line two. The difference is I'm going to, I'm going to use the, 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 the different um, ways to, um, to control the button or different actions on the button. So to do a button, first off, to add a button, um, we are going to go to uh, main window here, right click, say new, say base controls, and add a button. Notice that we do have plenty of other options here. We have text boxes, labels, spin box, LED, switch, checkbox, option box, linear gauge, circular, circular gauge, um, etc. So I'm going to choose button. And I'm just going to kind of move it down a little bit and make it a little bit bigger here for us. And I'm going to go ahead and put a, uh, I'm going to go right click again. I'm going to put a new base control and put a label. I'm going to put a label over this button. And I'm going to call this um, mouse click toggle. Now when I do this, the properties for this object, this label, come over here. So I can scroll down a little bit. I can change the font color. I can change the uh, alignments and the word wrapping and the font and size. I'm gonna go ahead and change the weight to be bold, just to kind of bold this a little bit. Now I'm gonna click on this button. And just like uh, the properties for the label, the properties for the button now show up. Um, so we have the appearance, we have the size, um, and the text and font. So right now the label on the button is button one. I'm gonna change this to start line one. I could also change this uh, font weight to a bold, just to kind of make it stand out a bit more. And as far as the action goes, or the events, we have three to choose from down here. We have mouse click event, mouse down event, and a mouse up event. So in this first example, I want to show you the mouse click event. So we're going to hit the plus symbol here to add a new method. When we add a new method, we're going to choose commands, variable commands, and toggle. So our choices are increment value, set bit value, set variable value, toggle, and toggle bit. Now toggle bit might seem like that's the one we want to do, but we're actually going to choose toggle. After I do that, down here, we have our input arguments and we have our variable to modify. So when I choose the variable to modify, I get a little select node uh, button. I can pick that, and this lets me scroll through my, uh, throughout my entire project. And if I were to scroll down far enough, I come to com drivers, RA ethernet, echo, tags, controller tags, and here are my tags that I've imported earlier. I'm going to choose start one. 
and say select. Now I'm going to right click, I'm going to say copy, and then I'll say paste. And I'm just going to paste this as a second button. I'm going to basically just change this real quick to say stop line one. And then I'm going to change my variable to be stop one. So I've got a push button now to start and to stop the line. Now to test this out, I can start the emulator. So to start the emulator, right now we have our the uh, we have our method of of deploying this as emulator. We could we could deploy it locally or remotely as a runtime. I'm going to go with emulator. I'm going to hit the start button here, and our emulator will open up. And this will allow me to look at the button and how it behaves. So here's my emulator window. I've sized it down a little bit just to make it easier to see. Um, so I'm going to uh, bring back my, my Logix uh, program, get the emulator back open again. And what I want to show you is what happens here on, on this rung zero in the start. So this is a mouse click and it's a toggle. So when we choose this option, when I press start line one and I've taken my mouse off, I've already clicked it once, took my finger off the mouse, this bit has toggled and stayed on. It is literally toggled. Um, I have to mouse click it again in order to toggle it off. And if I wanna stop the line, I click it, I've moved my mouse off of it. I have to click it again to set it back to the way it was. So again, uh, if I click it, then it toggles the bit on, click it again, toggles a bit off. Click it, click it. All right. So our other set of buttons that we can choose will be the, uh, the events of click on the mouse up and mouse down. So I'm gonna highlight all this. I'm gonna say copy and paste. This time I'm gonna change the label to say mouse down, up, toggle, just so we can kind of keep up with what each one does. I'm gonna to come to, to start line one. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to now be line two. I'll go ahead and uh, change my label on this stop button as well to line two. Actually, what I should probably do is uh, go ahead and delete that and we'll copy once I build this. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, come to this mouse click event. Since I had copied it, I'm gonna delete the method. Now I'm gonna come to my mouse down and mouse up events. I'm going to add a mouse down event, command, variable, toggle. And I'm gonna link it to the variable. And I have to scroll back down again to my com drivers, RA Ethernet, Echo, Tags, Controller Tags. And this time I'm going to choose Start To. But I also need to create a mouse up event. Because for this to work, when I click my mouse down, it's going to toggle. But then when I click up, or uh, uh, then it's going to also toggle. So that way, it'll become a true momentary push button uh, when I do this. So I'm also gonna choose um, for the mouse up event, the method was toggle, just like before. And I'm gonna choose the exact same variable or tag to be um, controlled here. So ethernet, echo, tags, controller, start to. Now, since I've already uh, did most of that work there, I'm gonna copy this and paste it. This time I got, I'm going to just change the, the, uh, the label to stop line two. 
And if I come back down here to the mouse down and mouse up events, I'm going to change my variable to stop to and change this variable to stop to as well. Okay, so, uh, so now I have my other one built around this mouse up and down action. So I'm going to start the emulator back again. I'll bring the emulator back over here. We'll open up, uh, open up the logics. So now, just like before, when I, when I click on the uh, mouse click toggle, it stays as, a, as kind of a maintained. It's been toggled. But now, when I do my mouse up-down toggle, when I click, it's on. But when I took my mouse finger off the mouse, it went off. So click on, mouse down, mouse up. Mouse down, mouse up. Whereas again here, I click it and it's a maintained toggle. Here, mouse down, I just took my finger off the mouse, mouse down, mouse up. So essentially, if we wanna do a, a maintained type push button, we're gonna use this mouse click and we can toggle it. And if we wanna do a, a true kind of momentary uh, push button, then we're gonna have to build this the event around both the mouse down and mouse up uh, toggle in order to do that.